those uh, reticle lines are super thin. I love how precise those are. At 15 power, they're still super small. I'm at around 30, still small, even at 40. <laughs> I'm impressed with the reticle. Okay, that was low. All right. So let's just hold up on the, uh, the elevation. That was a hit. I can see both of those impacts are right next to each other. Really need a spotter for this. Yeah, that was just beyond the right shoulder, so that was about where I was aiming. That was in front of it. So now we're shooting the uh, Palmetto State Armory, it's the AAC, I believe it's the 170, yeah, it's the 175 grain OTM, open tip, match rounds. So these should be a little bit easier to hit, make hits with. I'm going to start at 600 and work my way out to 810. So 600, then uh, 700, and then the 810. So my hold on this should be 5.6 mils. So we'll see if that holds true. And again, I'm using, I'm not using the turrets because I'm going to have to take these part re-zero it and everything. Stupid fly. But uh, I am using the uh, reticle on the inside, which also is in mils. And from what I'm seeing, it is accurate as well because I'm making hits um, where I should be. So let me go back to the 600. And again, right now, I'm, I'm only on 24 power magnification. I'm not even using the 40. Because I can't track it and I can't see it. So for like zeroing or seeing where your bullet holes are and stuff, or just seeing a target, it's good. But for shooting, you're going to want to dial it back. All right, so the gun and the scope and the ammo type are consistent. There's my group of the other stuff. That was actually my cold bore shot, and that was me. Sorry. I jerked it. But the other three rounds were all inside of an inch, and that's with the, uh, oh, what is that, the Freedom Munitions. 147 grain stuff so again one inch group if you don't count the cold bore and me jerking one even if you count the cold bore you know if you it's still an inch and a half so the scope is holding zero that wasn't the issue this inconsistency here is just with that aac 175 grain stuff which is upsetting maybe it was me and i was jerking triggers i'll i'll retest it at some point but i got good accuracy out of that in the past consistently so i don't know if it's a consistency issue quality control or maybe my old man eyes are just tired but that tells me I'm not. So I don't know what it is, but the scope is not the issue. All right, welcome back guys. Today we're going to be doing a review of this optic right here. This is the Discovery Op, and as you can see on here, is the EDELR. This is a five to 40 power magnification. It's the first focal plane scope, and it has ED glass in it. So real quick, I wanna mention uh, the reason why I believe the glass is so clear on these is because I think, again, I'm not 100% sure on this, but I believe it's Japanese ED glass on the scope. And that's because their five to 25 power ED uh, scope that I reviewed previously does have the glass listed as Japanese ED glass. So I would assume that all of their glass is made uh, in Japan. So, and if you're familiar with Japanese glass, you know it's very clear. Now, I could be wrong on this. Maybe it's just the one scope has it and this one doesn't. I don't know 100% sure, but since the clarity is almost identical, at least from what I can tell on the 5 to 25 and this scope, I believe that this one does have Japanese glass as well. If I find out otherwise, I'll let you know. Um, another thing that I'll also mention is the parallax issues that I ran into on this specific scope um, is going to be remedied in their newer model, and they are making a newer model right now. Um, it, I'll show pictures of all this and everything, but they're going to be fixing all those small issues uh, that I ran into or that they've just decided they want to upgrade themselves. So that's another thing I like about this company is they see problems and they immediately go to fix it. I was curious. They actually contacted me again to see if there was anything I want to review. And this actually jumped out at me because I don't remember seeing this the last time they asked. And I told them, sorry, there wasn't anything I was interested in at the moment. But then I saw this. And this kind of caught my eye because on my other scope that I have and Again, obviously, I like this one because I spray painted it. This is the one that's a 5 to 25. It normally lives on my AR-10, and 
in case you're wondering for an update for this, um, one of my buddies took it to his police sniper school class with my Palmetto State Armory AR-10, and everything held up fine. Um, one thing that's funny is the scope rings, actually, I didn't torque them down properly. Oops, sorry, um, but it only moved ever so slightly, but it didn't torque either direction, so it didn't actually lose any, you know, didn't lose zero or anything. But that's why that's not painted right there. But that was my fault. I didn't torque these down. I just hand tightened them, and I forgot to check that before I sent it off with them. But it actually performed really well to that class where he shot out to about 1,200 yards, if I remember correctly. So, and I think he shot 600 rounds, maybe. Maybe it was less than that. I don't know. Somewhere around there. Full power, uh, the, uh, the M117, I think, if I remember correctly. The long-range stuff. Anyways, so... Long story short, this still is trucking along, still doing well. So this has, at this point, probably close to a 1,000 rounds through it with my AR-10 that's, you know, over gas. <laughs> so if it can survive that, you know, it's a good optic. This one, for the record, has a 34 millimeter uh, tube, if I remember correctly, and I think this one has a 35 millimeter tube. Yes, it does. So actually, one of the nice things about the rings is they actually have the dimensions and everything on there, so that's kind of nice. But that one is a 5 to 25. This one is a 5 to 40. And whenever I saw that, I was thinking 5 to 40. That's there's no way that's going to be clear or usable at the 40 power magnification, because I have a cheaper um, spotting scope that I use out the range. It's like it was like a cheap seventy dollar thing off Amazon, and it goes up to 60 power magnification and anything past 40 is completely unusable on it. So I was very skeptical when it came to you know this you know, to see how clear it was at a distance. And boy, does it matter when you spend a little bit more money to get something that's just better. Because this thing is absolutely phenomenal, even at the 40 power magnification. And I'll talk about that in a little bit, but let me first just kind of show you what's in the box because this thing is blocking half my view right here. And the box is massive, but I just want to kind of get it out of the way. So it does come with two shorter um, shade little adapters on the end that you can screw into the front of the scope. And then it comes with a really long one. All these can technically screw together, so if you really wanted to just make something super, uh, you know, comical, sticking off the end of your rifle, you know, you could do that. They're little sunshades. It comes with, like all others, sorry, getting things out of here is difficult. It comes with a scope leveling kit. I absolutely love these things. I think they sell these separate. So if you don't buy any of their scopes, but you want a good leveling kit, this thing works awesome. I've used this on every single optic I've installed now, and it is a lifesaver. It keeps you from having to constantly see if your reticle is elevated or, um, level correctly comes with a clean, cleaning kit yep comes with a little squeegee brush thing um there's a little squeegee on one end and there's a brush on the other i don't really care about all this but again i'll just kind of show you what it comes with just so you can see it also comes with and one of the things i like about this company is their quality control and normally it's really good there is one thing that they had wrong with this specific scope and i'm sending it back actually to them so they can see if it's something wrong with the scope itself or if it was just a quality control issue or if it's something they need to look at altogether. because again one thing i really like about this company is anytime i have an issue at all they say hey yeah tell us what it is take some measurements send it back like we want to fix it so we can actually make a good product most other cheap companies and i say cheap more budget friendly companies don't do that and i really appreciate the fact that they do that because they make a really solid option for the price it comes with a little instruction booklet that is basically worthless because it's kind of a uh, for all of their options it's a generic a, a generic instruction booklet if i can put that in there and then it comes with your um kind of inspection sheet where they kind of went through everything to see what was on there and if it gave it a pass or a fail or if it had any issues now one thing i will say is they did give a pass on the parallax now but i'll talk about that a little bit and I don't know if maybe it just passed whatever their specific QC is, um, but the markings on the parallax knob do not line up with where it actually is clear at that distance. And I'll, again, talk about that in a little bit, but I just want to kind of show you it comes in a massive box. So they're well packaged if that matters to you. And again, they did send this to me, so full disclosure there. Um, but let's talk about the negatives first. So the first negative I have is not really with the scope itself, and I don't know what rings height come with the scope because I told them don't bother including the, the scope rings in this one because... They sent me some of these already that I already had that fit it. So I believe, though, since this is the only one they make, this is probably the one that's included with it. They're a little too short. And as you can see on here, I put a half-inch UTG riser uh, underneath here, just on either side, so it would clear uh, my handguard on my AR-10. Now, technically, since my AR-10, and I'll, if you've seen pictures of it, it it's too big to put up on this table, but it has where the Picatinny rail section kind of goes away, and it has them where they're milled off, and it goes lower on the handguard, and then it comes back up at the very end. Um, because of that, even without these, it will technically fit on there, but not with this little scope cap. So if you take out the scope cap, it has like this much clearance. And to me, there's 
I don't know. I don't like that because if you the the rail flexes just ever so slightly or bends or you know under recoil or something, I don't want it to hit this. So I put these half inch risers on here, and with those, it's perfect. It also makes it to where um, lining up my eye to see where the eye box is is a lot easier than if I just use these by themselves. While again, they would work. Um, I prefer them to be a little bit higher up. So something I would like to see Discovery Op do is offer a set of these 35 millimeter scope rings that are a half inch taller total, and then that would be a lot better to use on AR-10s. Now, if you have something that doesn't have a Picatinny rail so section on the front, like a precision rifle or like a hunting rifle, something like that where you're putting this on, again, that handguard is not getting the, gonna get in the way because it's just a you know, open barrel there. So that's not gonna be a problem. These will work just fine with that. And the scope rings for what it's worth, I'll make a separate review on all their scope rings here in a little while because they offer a lot of different options and they are by far my favorite scope rings to date for the price. They remind me of the SWFA if you're familiar with that company. They make very high-end products for a very affordable price. Um, these remind me very much of those and I love the fact that they have all the torque marks just all over the place so you can't really <laughs> mess anything up. All right so the scope rings was kind of a negative but again you know, it depends on what, what you're mounting it on and your personal preference, how high you want it. So, but the only other negative I came across on this entire thing, and I was expecting there to be some, because again, uh, the uh, magnification on here going to 40, I thought that was going to cause some sort of clarity problems or, you know, un usability issues. And there was one whenever you zoom in all the way, I mentioned that now as well. Um, whenever you zoom in past about 28, if I remember correctly, um, the reticle on the inside where it has all of the uh, mill rad adjustments that Christmas tree kind of gets smaller and smaller and you lose a bunch of that Christmas tree as you zoom in so uh, if you plan on you know using the full power magnification you know say past 25 or so um, you're gonna have to use the, the the dials to adjust if you want to go past I think you could use five mils and down maybe it's four mils and down but you know if you needed more than that you're gonna have to use the adjustments on the turrets is that a big deal no you can zoom out see the entire reticle or if you're zoomed in you know dial with this not a big deal but I just thought that was worth mentioning that's not really a negative that's just something that comes with you know that much magnification this one over here because it doesn't go that high you don't run into that issue and you can still see the entire reticle um, but this one you know you're zooming in basically to Hubble telescope levels so you know you're gonna lose some of that and reticle. I thought the glass is clear on this one and it's not the issue is the the, uh, parallax adjustment so if you go to infinity it's pretty much blurry and everything so if I go to here it's blurry so around let's see if I can get it around the I don't know maybe 300 mark from here it's clear at 810 yards and then from 810 I just go in and I go this way so the max on here for clarity wise and again I'm shooting out to 810 yards is actually somewhere around the three, maybe 400 at the most. And then I dial it backwards, smaller from here. So there's too much movement on here. So they need to renumber these accordingly, or it could just be my example, I don't know. Um, but from infinity down to about here is basically unusable. So from here to here, you know, irrelevant. Here is about the maximum you're going to want to be. I, this was a 200 was really probably the clearest um, at everything except 810. So, you know, for what it's worth, you can put, you know, little marks on there if your example is like that. Now that said, because of that, I thought I was going to like this one more, but clarity wise, you know, they're both basically on par. I just have to know this. So that's kind of annoying. I'm um, having a dial. Now, granted, you're probably never going to know your exact distance, so you're probably going to you know, want to adjust it exactly perfect for clarity anyway, so that's not really that big of a deal. You know, set it somewhere where it needs to be and then kind of adjust. But if you're looking for fast shots, you know, and you need to get a clear sight picture, this markings on here are not accurate. So. I just thought I would mention that because that was, again, the only negative I could find with the scope. All right, let's go over the features. So it comes with your standard little flip cap on the front. And it has just an absolutely massive lens. It has a 35 millimeter uh, tube diameter for this thing. So it is a chunky boy. And in a minute, if I remember, I'll use that weight scale and I'll weigh it for you so you can kind of see the weight. It has really, really good turret uh, elevation adjustments. So I don't know if you can hear that or not but it has really good elevation turrets. One thing I wish they had on here, and I know others have said this as well, I wish they had locking turrets where you could pull them up, then you could adjust them and then push them down and they lock so they don't move. 
that would make it a far more usable, um, serious use, like in the field, uh, where you don't have to worry about losing zero. Now that said, they do have z uh, zero stop turrets, so on the back right here, you can see it's on zero, so if you go all the way up, I'm not worried about losing zero because it has negative one, zero, one, and it has all the markings, so I know, oh, okay, I zeroed this previously, I'm not down to the zero yet. Once the zeros match up, now I'm back to zero, and so I know exactly how much I turned. So if you, oops, I bumped it, well, you can see I'm on one now, and it's not at the zero, so I just turned it back to where the zero matches, it lines up, not a big deal. Now, that's not as uh, obviously prevalent over here. So over here, you might wanna make your own mark, so I wish they also, if they're not going to include the locking turrets on here where you know they lock up and down, um, I would ask that they put these little lines on this side as well. Uh, sorry, if I could get it in focus. On this side as well, so you know exactly where your turrets are. So that's really another complaint. That's just, you know, something I would like to see. The odds of bumping this one enough to where it matters is probably not a whole lot, but, you know, I thought that was worth mentioning as well. Um, it is illuminated, so if you turn it on here, it is not daylight bright, no scope that's not fiber is. So, uh, but it does allow you to see, you know, in dark areas or like a black target uh, where the black reticle kind of blends into it. It does give enough illumination even on a sunny day to where you can see that reticle then because it's, it's slightly red. So that is nice or, but it's mainly for like dusk and dark, you know, shooting. But I like the turrets. It does have a zero stop as I mentioned. Um, all you have to do is just loosen these Allen screws all around here. The top will pop off and then you can adjust the zero turret to wherever you want the zero to be. And then you adjust it, tighten everything back down and then, you know, obviously line it up with here. So it's completely adjustable to whatever you want. It does have the, I will say the uh, the turns the turn knob on here, um, actually is better than the other one. It's a lot smoother for the uh, magnification ring. On this one, other one over here, it's a lot stiffer. Maybe you like stiffer ones, <laughs> but uh, the I mean this one's not it's not terrible. Like it's still usable, but you need this little nub with this one versus this one. You really don't. I mean, I can, I can, I can. Sorry, if I, it would help if I get things on camera. So I don't even really need that knob. The knob makes it easier. But if you don't like the, how that sticks out, yeah, you can, you can easily turn this without that. So um, I like the fact that whatever they did to that is better. They do have this little end cap on here that comes off and it sticks on the side. If that matters to you, you'll probably lose in the field if you leave it there. So I just leave it on here for storage, and whenever I'm shooting, you know, I take it off, throw in my pocket, whatever. Um, the glass on this thing is absolutely phenomenal. If you see my other video on this one, you'll know these things have just the clearest glass on the planet. Um, I'm I'm blown away. I tried to get video footage of it. Maybe I'll insert some pictures if I remember. Um, I'm sorry. I tried. I even bought this thing um, to try to hook onto the end of the scopes, and it's just this is just small enough where it won't actually fit over that. And I don't know of another company that makes a larger one, so sorry. Um, I'll show you what the reticle looks like and everything. Just know that this thing has phenomenal clear glass. If you're curious what the glass looks like, it's identical to this one. It just has more magnification. So I thought and fully expected it to be not unusable, but blurry um, on the higher magnifications. I knew it would be fine up to 25 because that one was fine up to 25. It was actually still really clear. Um, but once I got to about the 25 mark, I just put it on there and I started shooting and I started dialing in and man, did that make a difference. At 810 yards, I can see it and read the 810 and I can take fairly accurate shots with this one. The 25 power is more than enough at that distance. But having that extra um, 15 power magnification is just phenomenal. And it wasn't any blurrier. Now, you still get that kind of haze from the uh, the heat mirage that comes up. And so things naturally, you know, are only so clear. Um, but it wasn't unusable like my cheap spotting scope, which, again, is what is I, I was expecting. So I would I would say the 40 power magnification is entirely usable. Um, the problem I had is I didn't have anyone spotting for me. So I couldn't see where my bullet impacts were because, you know, on 40 power magnification, you barely flick this thing and, you know, you're, you can't see the target anymore because that's a lot of magnification. Any movement, you know, just takes you completely off target. So I couldn't spot for myself. So what I ended up doing is I actually cranked it back down to about 25 or 20, if I remember correctly. And I was able to spot for myself at that point. So just know if you're shooting higher power, power yeah, power magnification and you don't have, you know, you're not dialed into exactly what you already know and you don't have your ballistics calculator and all that kind of stuff. If you're just kind of seeing where your impacts are and adjusting accordingly, you're not going to be able to use all that magnification. That's just, you know, something to take note.
But again, I was just absolutely blown away that that uh, 40 power was usable. Um, the iBox on it was actually still really easily used. I was, I was surprised yet again because I expected on 40 power to just you know just a hair width in either direction and you lose the iBox entirely is what I thought was going to happen, but it didn't. Um, the iBox in my mind was about as just as forgiving as this one was on 25 power magnification. I didn't really notice any difference. And part of that, again, is just because of the sheer size of this and the glass they use. I mean, they're able to, you know, cheat a little bit by making everything a little bit bigger uh, to make that iBox just, you know, a little bit more forgiving. So I really like Again, that. for $400, I'm absolutely blown away. Um, these things, I actually sold my SWFA uh, 10 power scope that I had because... That was my favorite scope at the time being, or at the time, because um, how durable it was and how clear the glass was and everything. And I eventually just sold it because this thing was just better in every single way. Um, absolutely better. And this one, I don't know that it's better than this one. I would say they're basically the same when it comes to clarity and usage and everything else. It's just this one has more magnification. One other difference between the two is this cap turret is held on with Allen screws, just like the side one, versus this one, only the side one is held on with Allen screws. This one's actually held on with like a, this is a big screw, more or less, that screws off and then it'll come up. Um, that was one difference. Also, this one has 0.1 mil rad adjustments per click on those. This one is 1 20th. So this one, the, the mil rads are basically half what our, those are. So you get a lot more fine tune adjustment with, with this, which I would say isn't necessary, but it is nice to have considering you have 40 power magnification. So you can really, you know, take advantage of that. So between the two, which would I buy? Honestly, I don't know. I think that's up to you depending on what features you want. Do I like this one well enough to where I'm going to take the time to respray paint this thing and put it up on my rifle? No, I honestly think the 25 power was enough to shoot out at the distance that my rifle is capable of and I can still see well. But, you know, this does give you, you can just see things closer. So if you're trying to see somebody or something out at, you know, a thousand yards, you're going to be able to see it better with this versus this. But you can still take, you know, I would say accurate shots with either. So if I was buying them from the get-go, like I didn't own either of these yet and I was going to buy one, I would probably go ahead and get this one because you can always just dial it down to whatever you want. Yeah, it's a little bit heavier, but I mean, it's a 308 rifle. They're chunky to begin with. So, I mean, I don't consider a 308 rifle of any kind something you can kind of march around with or ruck with or anything else. Like, they're they're heavy. It's more of a emplacement type weapon. If you're going to put something like this on there, yes, you could put like an LPVO on an AR-10 or something like that if you want to. And that would be a more lightweight option. But if you're looking for something that's just for precision, um, you know, for longer range, this uh, would be kind of what I would go with. And again, I would put this one just slightly above this one. When it comes to just like what I would prefer if I were doing it all over again, but I don't feel inadequate with this one. I'm just going to stay this or keep this one on my rifle because it's already zeroed for it. It's already spray painted. It matches, and I don't really necessarily need that extra magnification. Although it is nice. So if you're again, if you're buying this for the first time, go with this one. Uh, if you're not, go with this one. Now I will say one advantage this one has is the. Uh, the scope rings on here make it work with an AR-10. So if you don't want to buy your own scope rings and you want to use with what it comes with, you're going to have to buy these old risers, which I think these risers are like 10 bucks a piece or something. So for 20 bucks, not a big deal. Or you can buy your own set of 35 millimeter you know, risers and not worry about it. But these are usable with an AR-10 just out the gate. Um, assuming your AR-10, again, has those cutouts on the handguard where the Picatinny rail section is gone. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Again, I try to be as unbiased as I possibly can in these videos. Um, I appreciate y'all watching. Share, subscribe, like, do all that YouTube stuff. It really helps out a lot. Um, I'll try to be doing some giveaways here coming up if I remember. Um, I'm also going to be doing some destruction tests on a whole bunch of random stuff. So I hope stick, uh, stay tuned for all that. Anyways, I hope y'all have a good one.